Thank you. Lynn, this is an extraordinary book. I've um, actually used it already for the book that I'm writing. That's and great. This, there have been facts in it that I don't think anybody else had unearthed before. And um, whose idea was this? How did you come up with this in the first place? Um, this was a, as actually an interesting story. I think it's interesting. Um, I'm one of the three editors. Sherry Thomas and Eric Marcus are also the other, are the mm -hmm. other two editors. And back in the 1970s, Sherry um, was running a sheep farm <laughs> in, in Northern California, and she and another woman put together a book um, called Country Women that was published by Doubleday. Right, I remember that. Yeah. And then Sherry went on and wrote a second book about farm women. And then her life went on and she did various things. And among them, that she started, she didn't start, but she um, took over Spinster's publishing company and mm -hmm. ran the publishing company for 10 years. Well, the woman had been her editor back at Doubleday, and Sherry stayed in touch because they were sort of in the same field. Mm -hmm. And fast and back in, 1970, in the 1970s, her editor had hired a young woman to work for her named Maureen. Fast forward 25 years, Sherry's now got a new project. The editor has become an agent, and Maureen, who she had hired, is now at Warner Books. So they were having dinner That's together good. one night, as as you know, old girl, old girls network, as it were. Right. About three or four times a year, <laughs> they that get old. together for dinner. <laughs> Maureen and Ed Loretta was, was our agent, and they were re reminiscing about what they had done, mm -hmm. projects they'd worked on, and they'd put together the People's Almanac. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, that sure. Had, ended up having three volumes. Mm -hmm. Which I just love. I just mm -hmm. it's I just think it's a fascinating book. And they said, what would be a people's almanac of the nineties? Mm -hmm. And they came up with this idea for a gay and lesbian almanac. Oh. Loretta says, I know, I'll call Sherry. Mm -hmm. So she calls up Sherry, who's just started working at the Library Foundation because she's been, you know, head of the fundraising for right. the main library. Right. And so Sherry have this great idea, Warner's is really interested, all these things, and Sherry said, no thank you, I just started this new job. Mm -hmm. And she came home from work and she said, Loretta called today and she had this project and I told her there's no way I can and do you it. Share I, your I just, partners. We're, we've been living right. together for eight years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, you know, it was a great idea, but you know, I can't do this. I have this brand new job. Isn't that great? I finally said no to something, she mm -hmm. says to me. And I said, what? Apparently not really well. <laughs> I said, I said, are you out of your mind? And so we spent the weekend sort of saying, is it possible? I said, I'll do this. I can do mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. you can be essentially, you know, a senior editor on the project right. or something. Right. So, And how did Eric Marcus, and I think his, his last book was uh, Breaking the Surface, um, the, which is Greg Luganis's uh, autobiography, autobiography yeah. but our, with, Eric with was Eric. the um, ghostwriter. Well, How did we, he get involved? Well, after yeah. we called Loretta back and, mm -hmm. and proposed that I would be the main editor and that Sherry would, would be a more senior editor, but that mm -hmm. I would do most of the work, um, we said that we had a couple of gay men in mind that we felt like we wanted to do, we felt it was important to do gay and lesbian, and we wanted to have men involved. Mm -hmm. um, was there any particular reason that you wanted to do gay and lesbian rather than just a, a lesbian almanac? Um, in part, that was what they wanted. I mm -hmm. mean, they had sort of said that from the mm -hmm. beginning. But as we started thinking about who the audience would be and who would buy it mm -hmm. and who would want it, we felt like it was very important. The community's changed over the years. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in our lives, we have a lot more gay men friends that we used to have and stuff and it right. just seemed like it was really time there was mm -hmm. there wasn't anything like that out there right so we um sherry had met eric actually used to be on the advisory board of the harvey milk branch of the library here he lived here for four years in san mm -hmm. francisco and sherry mm -hmm. had worked with him then mm -hmm. and he'd moved back to new york and so we were in new york um meeting with warners actually and uh set up a date with Eric and mm -hmm. talked to him about it, and he was pretty interested too. So mm -hmm. it was actually pretty simple. It seems a very daunting task, though, and I believe I heard that originally the manuscript was actually a 1,000 pages. Or it was so. 1,800 oh, pages. Oh, 1,800 pages. Oh, that's quite a more. Okay. How, I, how did you decide what you would put in this book? Well, we started off with, after Warners had said, yeah, they were interested, 
Mm -hmm. I put together a proposal mm -hmm. um, with Sherry and Eric's help mm -hmm. and with sample pages and a sample outline. And we said there would be mm -hmm. eight chapters and we sort of How figured, did you pick um, the number eight? Um, well, it ended up with ten chapters. We started uh -huh. off with eight. Uh -huh. um, I actually sat in my living room with three by five cards mm -hmm. and pencils. And I went through the People's Almanac. I went through several traditional almanacs at the library just mm -hmm. to see what, what do almanacs have in them, what kind of topics, right. what kind of themes, how are they organized. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I just wrote on cards, and then I had a little fit and uh, <laughs> thought, I can't do this, uh -huh. I can't do this. And uh -huh. so I went to sleep because it was like uh -huh. 1 o'clock in the morning. And the next morning I got up and I just started sorting them into piles mm -hmm. and what kind of themes did we have? Do we had politics as a mm -hmm. theme and we had history as a theme and, mm -hmm. what, you know, we had community as a theme and just mm -hmm. that well, kind of you thing. You know, th and this is, this is an almanac and I, I was always wondering what is the difference between an encyclopedia like a gay and lesbian encyclopedia and an almanac? Well, you know, I've, I've thought a lot about the fact that it's called an almanac mm -hmm. and that a lot of people go, well, an almanac, I'm not interested. When people have asked me while I was working on it what it was, I said the compendium of little known facts, gay and lesbian first, articles, tidbits, essays, photographs, cartoons, mm -hmm. um, and little did you knows. Little mm -hmm. facts, little whatever that we dug up or that, you know, existed. We read a lot of gay press. I mm -hmm. subscribed to all the gay press for mm -hmm. a while. The New York Times every day. A lot's mm -hmm. happening internationally, which isn't in the book because mm -hmm. we had enough for another whole chapter mm -hmm. or perhaps even another whole project in the future. Some of these details that you came up with were were amazing. There are things that I had no idea of. And for instance, um, Catherine Lee Bates, um, who wrote the words to America the Beautiful and set and set the words to some old hymn or something right, like that. Right. And um, and then Douglas Cross, a gay man, wrote I Left My Heart in San Francisco. And, but the one that really got me was uh, the gay man who uh, who invented camouflage and K rations. And I thought two different men. That, th two oh, those are two different two guys. Different okay, I, put, I blended yeah. them together. Well, how did her, how did you find out that? Okay. Stuff, well, the, you know. the okay, the K rations. Uh -huh. I found out it was it's, it's published. Actually, Eric Marcus has it in Making History, mm -hmm. and I was actually at an event. Actually, it was for the library. It's for the new library. Jim Hermel was talking, mm -hmm. and he actually I heard it from him first that he was talking about Herb King because he lives mm -hmm. in San Diego, mm -hmm. and Jim had met him, and he talked about mm -hmm. in the forties. Of course, uh, Herb King was in the closet, but he was in the military, and. Uh, and that's why they're called K-rations, K for king. Oh. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> um, camouflage was interesting. We, one of the things we did is we wrote to all of the gay and lesbian archives mm -hmm. and, and libraries in the country. Mm -hmm. And some of them are actual archives of libraries, like the one here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, which is a fabulous resource. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are just one or two people maintaining a, a few things, and some of them are right. actually lending libraries. Well, there's one in Texas called the Happy Foundation. Right, right. And essentially, I, the the man who invented camouflage, whose name escapes me at the moment, I apologize, um, and his lover has sort of set up this foundation in his memory. Mm -hmm. And um, he was actually... Um, a designer mm -hmm. who went into the military ended up in camouflage school. Now, there had been camouflage before, mm -hmm. but the camouflage that we think of with a little bit different colors and some of the patterns is what he designed, was part of what he did. I think a lot of the stuff that you have found and put together in here um, breaks a lot of stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for instance, we're, we're used to thinking of a, a gay man, oh, he can be a designer or something, but you don't really think of him as designing camouflage right. outfits for the military. Right. And, um, gosh, I think uh, the military ought to be informed of that, you know? I think <laughs> um, it's one of Sherry's things, favorite, favorite things to say when we talk about the book is that maybe perhaps that whole debate on gays in the military would have been a little different if we had a few of these facts to start off right, the discussion. Right, right. Or, or this idea that, that lesbians somehow have always inhabited some shadowy world, underworld or something, you know, that those cheap little novels from the, right, right. the pulp novels would tell us. When, you know, here's, here's uh, this Wellesley professor writing America the Beautiful, you know, after coming back from, I think you told me. The Chicago World's Fair. That, with her that, girlfriend or yeah, partner or whatever. Partner, right. Yeah. And actually, she lived in a whole community in, in Colorado, I guess. 
mm -hmm. with a whole mm -hmm. lot of women. It mm -hmm. wasn't just the two of them isolated in some mm -hmm. corner. Um, now, you decided to organize the book in certain categories. Um, and you were mentioning what some of the categories were, and I think um, that our viewers might be interested in mm -hmm. how you arranged it. Well, after I sort of did all this sorting and went off in search of things, which I could tell you more about, mm -hmm. um, I tried to really think about, if you were reading this, it's not meant to be read from the front to the back. It's mm -hmm. meant to you pick it up, you open it up, oh, wow, I learned something. And if you mm -hmm. want to read the article that goes with that tidbit, you can or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really just to pique your interest. But if you were to start at the beginning and go to the end, I tried to think sort of not so much chronologically. We started off with mm -hmm. chronological, decided that wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. But I tried to look at how our lives really are. So I started off with a chapter called We Are Everywhere. Because mm -hmm. I really want to say, because we are everywhere. So mm -hmm. the kinds of things in the first chapter are all the political first, all, who's been elected to office, um, the, some of the things you've mentioned, mm -hmm. America, the beautiful kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, all of the kinds of things where, where we, in gays in fashion and gays mm -hmm. in the military, there is yeah. there are so articles, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sort of a we are everywhere. And then the second chapter is called How We're Seen, How We See Ourselves. And it's kind of a clunky title, but I really thought about Again, how we're seen from the outside and mm -hmm. how we see ourselves. So it's mm -hmm. movies and TV and theater, both how we've been right. portrayed and how we portray ourselves right. and writing and literature. Mm -hmm. That's more lists and some things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went into history, finding ourselves in history. We were going to do... Um, how, far, how far back in history did you, well, did you go? Or? We were a very U.S.-focused book, mm -hmm. so there's a little bit outside the U.S., but not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we decided that we weren't going to, again, be chronological. We have, mm -hmm. the, to me, the neatest stuff in that chapter, actually, is um, the work that um, Jim Wilkie did. Um, we call mm -hmm. it Frontier Queers. And he's a... Frontier you, Queers? Uh -huh. You want to read a little bit from well, Frontier Queers? Well, actually, maybe? I want to tell you a little bit about what okay. he's done. Uh -huh. He lives in L.A., and he's been doing research on gays in gay men and women in um, the military in the 1880s, 1890s kinds oh, uh -huh, of stuff. Uh -huh. And the stuff, the, 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 the articles that we have here haven't been published anywhere else. It's his first time it's been published, mm. which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And he did some really neat stuff. One of my most favorite, which is just kind of silly, but um, he has, he has, we have a couple of photographs from his collection. But um, there was a train robber, a famous train robber named Bill Miner, and he was known as we the have gray a train robber. As, he was known as the Gray Fox. They made uh -huh. a film about him. Right. Um, the Pinkerton Detective Agency, who was set off in charge of him, said he was a quote unquote a sodomite, ah. and his accomplice, accomplices <laughs> were young men that he met during his periodic stays in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Gee, you know, I, now there we break a stereotype again. Right there, We're train right there. robbers. I mean, well, maybe you could, you could imagine lesbian train robbers, but, you know, gay men. Tra I like this. I like yeah. this very much. Uh, what, what are some, the other chapters that you... Well, after, yeah. after finding ourselves in history and that kind uh -huh. of thing, we then came a little bit more... We, we were talk. we go into finding identity. What, what, what does that mean? Well, what I was yeah. trying to figure out, okay, we have, we can say, okay, here we are in history. And you mm -hmm. have to remember history, that you can't, I mean, we're talking from 1996, right. saying these people were gay. It didn't mean that people used those terms, but it, it, how we perceive gay and lesbian people, those labels apply from our perspective. Right, right. But then, and that got us thinking about what, did it, what is it to be gay? What does it mean to be gay and black? What does it mean to be Jewish and disabled and gay? Or whatever mm -hmm. kinds, who are we? Mm -hmm. Before you can have a community, we, you have to know, you have to find yourself. Mm -hmm. And so we have a chapter called Finding Identity, which is coming out tidbits, stories about people's lives, somewhat stories about family. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my most favorite chapters. We were going to do a section on African American gays, a section on Jewish gays, a mm -hmm. section on da 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 da, mm -hmm. and we realized there was no way we could speak to everybody. Mm -hmm. So we gathered material. Most of the stuff, most of the articles, and the short tidbits in that chapter mm -hmm. are reprints. Unlike most mm -hmm. of the other book, a lot of the other articles were written for us. Mm -hmm. Most of those are things that we found at other sources, and we. We probably gathered enough for three chapters. You and say then, people wrote articles for you and you did reprints. How right. did you find the people to write the articles? Um, real early on, um, 
because we got an advance and I got to quit my job, as oh, we that's mentioned earlier. Good. That's very good. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, I spent the first uh, part of the first four months traveling. Mm -hmm. And I basically used Sherry and Eric's enormous list of contacts, because Eric mm -hmm. has written, what, five books now. Right. And Sherry published books and it mm -hmm. wrote books all those years. But and you're the one that went on the road. But I went on the road. Okay. They all stayed home and did their did their paying jobs. Well, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I went around and so I went to twelve cities and I sort Were of, they in all in one area or I went throughout? to the East Coast, the Midwest, mm -hmm. the Pacific. Okay, so I did not out. I went to the South. I went to Atlanta first actually. Mm -hmm. Um and that was great. That was my first time in the South actually. That was oh. just wonderful. Um, and in each of those cities I I had appointments with two or three people and in mm -hmm. the course of meeting with them I would then ask for other people mm -hmm. and I wasn't looking for writers I was looking mm -hmm. for people who were doing things or who might have knowledge and I had this tremendous outline and it's back when I only had eight chapters <laughs> right and I'd sort of say gee I don't know who you are but are you interested in any of these things uh -huh. and then I learned as I went on to figure sort out of more a about potpourri of yes. possibilities yes. could be anything to figure out or somebody would say you know this person has been working on uh, a gay TV program right. and they know all this stuff or, wow. um, this is a very complicated kind of project, though. It, it actually, well, yeah. you know, it's interesting when I got introduced as a systems analyst because that is exactly <laughs> right. what this was about. Because right. people kept saying, how could you do this? Because I hadn't really written anything in a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And I like writing and I'm comfortable and I'm good at it, but, mm -hmm. but it really was a puzzle. It, mm -hmm. was, it was, what is the big picture? What's it made up of? Mm -hmm. And, okay, you're not going to get this piece what are you going to use instead? How are you going to balance this? Oh, mm -hmm. do you have you know 16 things by lesbians and nobody by anybody on the West Coast or mm -hmm. whatever? Mm -hmm. Or everybody's from San Francisco. Where are you going to find these other people? Did it feel a little political at any point? I know that whenever anyone I know has written a book about that has anything to do with lesbian and gay history, um, there are often battles over who's you know who is going to be. Um, designated as the first to have done something or that type of thing. Uh, did you run up against that at all? Well, we tried not to have first as much as interesting tidbits for that very reason. Mm. There are some first that we could verify. The political firsts are very easy to verify. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who was first elected in what state or mm -hmm. to a national office as opposed to a local office, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. You know, mm -hmm. there are records. Um, but some other kinds of things, you know, was New York or San Francisco first in something? And that right. was, if there was a tension, mm -hmm. in quotes, mm -hmm. it, was, it was the New York, San Francisco, because so right. much was going on at the same period in both right. places. And both, both cities think, you know, we, we, we both have parochial ideas about who's really running gay politics and, and the gay movement. And so we sort of know about, if we're in New York, we know about everyone in New York and San Francisco, everyone in San Francisco. So, but you had to bridge that gap. And part of bridging that was going to other cities besides the coasts. Well, that's and that was right. what was really interesting uh -huh. to me is there's a lot is going on in a lot of cities. Could you give an example? Uh, well, Minneapolis was a fabulous city. I, I went to Minneapolis, Minneapolis with I did yeah. two, with four contacts, mm -hmm. and I asked everybody for names of other people. And by the time I left in four days, I had seen 20 people. Everybody had called me back. Everybody started cross referring me to the mm -hmm. same group of people. Mm -hmm. They have public radio. They have more gay radio programs in mm -hmm. Minneapolis than mm -hmm. any other city. There's no gay neighborhood in Minneapolis, right. but there's there's three bookstores. Um, there's a community center. There's all of those kinds of things. The people and then are there actually are people who quite are doing open. things. Very uh, amazingly. That's, I found that the, that the straight people there, I went on some uh, regular talk shows, mm -hmm. you know, and they were perfectly open, very nice people. I, I liked them. Mm -hmm. That's, that's um, it's always difficult to try and go to all those little cities, though, because people tend to be more closeted. And I was thinking that uh, something that was wonderful about this book is that you, you don't have to be in a, in a big city to find out about your history. You know, you can just pick this up. And Well, and the other thing, I, it was very interesting doing nothing but gay, lesbian stuff for two years. Mm -hmm. I sort of thought everybody was out at some point. I'm going, you thought, oh, right, you were out and your friends are out and so And everybody think, I'm talking to and everything I'm reading, of the same, everything I'm reading, right. every, every conversation The I'm civil having, rights war's over, everything's right. fine. And right. I spend an hour to hour and a half every day on the internet, which is what you're talking oh, about, small right. Right. And that was the other piece that not only made the book work, but gave me this sense that there's not just that the sense that so much is happening, but so much is happening in small towns everywhere, in Alabama and in 
Idaho mm -hmm. and in Washington and all over the country in mm -hmm. small towns. My experience actually of a lot of the um, of the uh, gay bulletin boards and, and things on the internet was actually very few, comparatively few people from San Francisco and New York hmm. and the really big cities and a lot of people from the South Mm -hmm. and the Midwest and Pacific Northwest. Perhaps because they don't have as large of an, an exactly. open population. And very brave people doing a lot of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, going on marches when, you know, we, we talk, you know, San Francisco Gay Pride has 200,000, 300,000. Whether, you know, you're talking about, you know, right. 700 people march down the street right. in some small town, and this is fabulous, Montana. Right. Are, you, are, you, do you have, are you still on the Internet at this yeah, point? Yeah, I'm not doing my sort of daily right. check-in anymore. Right. Um, because it gets a bit overwhelming and, and well, stuff. What, what are some of the other chapters, just so that people have an idea of what the range of this book is? Well, we went from finding identity and sort of all the people talking about who they were into what we call building community. Mm -hmm. And that which is about relationships, everything from personal ads to reasons not to get married to gay neighborhoods to... <laughs> reasons not to get not married, to get married, even if we can. No, yeah, no. Okay. as well as getting married. That's a both, good... Both I like that, okay. <laughs> um, you know, all those kinds of these gay neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also talk about community in the sense of the archives that I mentioned, the libraries, right. the kinds of institutions that we've built, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The next chapter that we came up with is called Myths and Facts, and it's a really, um, one of the shorter chapters, and it has some reprints from some of Eric's um, work. He did a book mm -hmm. called 300 Questions You Up. 300 Things You Always Wanted to Know About Gays and Lesbians. I think I never get the title of that book right. right. But anyway. <laughs> in, the, in, the myths, myths. in the myths and facts, um, there must have at some point been some myths or facts that surprised even you. I mean, well, can, can you think of any of those? That well, actually, well, the best the two fun things in that chapter were we found a list, and this was off the Internet, I believe, of... Mm -hmm. um, animals of which uh, uh, scientists have studied that have same-sex coupling, in quotes. Right. And we called it, even educated fleas do it. Uh, and, and so you must have had the, the uh, lesbian seagulls of Anacapa. We have right? that. Okay. We have, that. We and, have there uh, are many. I, right. I could read you a few, but <laughs> right. um, that was one. But one of the things that I found here in San Francisco at the um, Gay Lesbian Historical Society mm -hmm. was a little pamphlet, it was about that big, um, called How to Recognize Homeless, well, it was called, it was from a group called Teen Challenge, which existed in Orange County, Los Angeles in the 60s, that having grown up in Orange read County, I have them. heard about right. them. And right. actually, Jim Kepler, who um, has been very instrumental in keeping our history over the years, who lives mm -hmm. down in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. knew a lot about them when I brought it up to him. Anyway, I found this pamphlet, and it was a Christian, in quotes, very right-wing, mm -hmm. apparently designed by uh, ex-homosexuals, according to Jim. Right. Um, how to, how to recognize homosexuals. How sorry. to recognize homosexuality. Right. And it had 25 of the funniest things you could possibly imagine. And they had a whole section on, on lesbians. Um, I can't had, imagine. Oh, I can't imagine. Well, you know, the whole older woman, younger woman. And oh, really? The, oh, oh, right. All of that oh, stuff. Right. Just That's hilarious. Right. They had a whole section <laughs> at the back about how two ministers should never, should always ask for separate rooms when they travel together. They should never have the same room. It was wow. just stunning. But it was one of the You know what I've, no what I've noticed things. about about this book and, and your attitude toward it is um, so many times when people are telling the history, they get really, really serious and oh. really tight. And the things that you always seem to bring up and in other conversations I've had with you, you've mentioned, are always things that have humor to them. And I mean, instead of looking at this list of 25 things as this heavy, horrendous thing, you're laughing at it. We and, and you're saying, well, we have to remember this, but we don't have to feel terrible or frightened by it anymore because we can look at it in perspective. And I think that that's something you do all through this book. Well, and I'm glad you see that because we tried that. Um, we tried to make sure that we kept things light, mm -hmm. um, serious and light. I mean, if you read right, the articles, right. you know, there's a lot of there, there. It isn't just right. tidbits. It isn't mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. here's something now, you know, close the book, go away. There's a lot of very interesting things there that, that are thoughtful that people put a lot of effort into. And... I, you know, I would have done a whole book of comics. I mean, I we have a whole thing. <laughs> and there's a chapter which called, I, which is a chapter, I always forget what it's called. It's called Wanna Have Fun, uh -huh. um, <laughs> okay. which I insisted, this is one of the chapters we added, mm -hmm. 
that mm -hmm. wasn't in the original take that I insisted we had because mm -hmm. I wanted cartoons. I wanted. Well, I have humor. to tell you, I have to make a terrible confession. You know where this book has been? It's in the bathroom. It has been in the bathroom, it's and, been in the and bathroom. people go, you know, they come on, they say, "Do you know what I just learned?" <laughs> and I know, you know. And the chances are, you haven't read that piece yet. Maybe not. What are the other chapters that you have? Okay. Well, after Myths and Facts, we went into a chapter called Our Very Queer Lives, and it's uh -huh. sort of the antithesis of We Are Everywhere. Uh -huh. um, in this chapter, we covered sort of the whole range of who we are as a gay lesbian community. So mm -hmm. we talk about the leather community, we talk about bisexuality, we mm -hmm. talk about transgender people. Mm -hmm. um, we um, talk about the origin of words and the origin mm -hmm. of colors, that kind of thing. Um, the origin of colors? Well, you know, lavender's always been associated with right. gay people, and that's always fascinated me, and I've never understood yeah, why is it. And that? people have asked <laughs> me. I know the pink triangle, and, and yeah. I know the, the black triangle, but I don't know well, lavender. Well, I didn't know that either. Well, Judy mm -hmm. Gron in Another Mother Tongue does a whole chapter on this, and I sort of read her stuff and, mm -hmm. and did a little more research. And my most favorite of her reasons, if I can uh, read this one or just even, well, um, Violence, which are related to pansies, were worn in England in the 1500s by men and women to indicate that they did not intend to marry. Oh, that's Is fascinating. That fascinating? Yes. And then yeah. she goes on, she has quite a few. Um, Narcissus, the whole story in Greek mythology about right. Narcissus, who right. scored the love of women, fell in love with his own image right. and eventually died. In the place where he died, a purple flower grew up with oh, white leaves. How interesting. Um, I wish he didn't die, though. Be nice yes. to be. <laughs> but there's That's many unfortunate of those, part, but those. The hyacinth okay. is purple. It's also in its name for um, love between two men, between, well, man in quotes, but the sun god Apollo, mm -hmm. and the use hy hyacinth. Um, Sappho is often described as being violet haired. Very um, interesting. She came up with right. a whole lot of these, although my most, I have two other ones that are favorites, which she did not come up with. And mm -hmm. one is that I found on the internet mm -hmm. was um, combining the colors pink and blue gives you lavender. Oh, of course. Which was interesting. Which is so, beca because it was a thing about being neither male nor female. Right, right. You know. Actually, that was the other color one. Yeah. The origin of the word gay, which I, which is really just up for grabs. There's a lot of different theories about There are about battles it. about that. Battles That's about <laughs> that. But my most favorite was um, somebody's actually sign off on the internet. Um, he said, gay is the feeling you get when all the straight people leave the room. <laughs> And maybe someday we'll be able to keep it, even when they're there. I'm like lesbian, which is fairly obvious, which is, was right. named for Lesbos and for Sappho. Right. Um, well, so that's, we, we did that in, in, in The Very Queer Lives. So we really tried to, that's to right. do a much broader scope, not just who are we out there in front of the camera, who are we behind right. the camera, right. as it were. And is that the concluding section? Or? Well, and then there we do want to have fun. Um, have fun. No, actually, we have another chapter. I always forget this chapter. Okay. We have another chapter called Ensuring Our Survival. And mm -hmm. that chapter, I sometimes call it the political chapter, not mm -hmm. the elected officials' political chapter, mm -hmm. but all the information about hate crime laws mm -hmm. and um, organizations who um, actually are our enemies as well as organizations that we should be supporting, mm -hmm. um, things we can do, everyday things mm -hmm. you could do. It's a lot about um, AIDS is throughout mm -hmm. the book, obviously. I mean, you cannot write a right. book in the 90s no. and not talk about the epidemic mm -hmm. and we didn't do an AIDS section or mm -hmm. just like we didn't do an African American section you mm -hmm. know because all of that is part of who we it's are. It's very intertwined. Um, but there is there are there are some more in the survival chapter mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. makes some sense mm -hmm. about that. Um, and the last chapter which was called the material world. What's that? And that Madonna was, take off? Right. Or no, uh, <laughs> Wow. Um, that is our business chapter, and, uh -huh. um, but it's more than that. This is where, again, the Internet comes into play. Um, mm -hmm. You know, issues about being out at work. Um, mm -hmm. One of the really fine resources was the Gay Librarian's listserv on the Internet. And when I needed a piece of information, a fact, I would just ask if they had it or I'd start a dialogue or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I came into a dialogue one day. I was just just got on in the morning and somebody had said, you know, I have this job interview and I don't know whether or not to be to, out to be in out. this interview. Sure. And she got, you know, 27 responses. And well, so great. I yeah. wrote to people and said, could I reprint your responses? And I've right. done that in a few other right. places as well. And one of the most interesting things to me was that every single person I wrote to got back to me. Every person said yes. And uh -huh. every person said I could use their name. Now, mostly I didn't. Right. But right. nobody said, gee, that was private, don't do mm -hmm. that, or I'd mm -hmm. rather not. Everybody said yes. Well, that shows that, that, that times have changed and um, 
and I think that this book is a really valuable document, and um, it, it's something that will be on the library shelves for a long time. And uh, the book is Out in All Directions, The Almanac of Gay and Lesbian America. And I understand it was uh, just nominated for the um, 1995 American Library Association's Gay and Lesbian Nonfiction Award. And so uh, thank you, Lynn Witt, well, thank very you. much. This was great. Okay.